Welcome back. Let's spend a minute talking about the firm's long-run decision to exit a market. So in the short run, the firm's fixed costs are fixed. They can't change them. So in the short run, all the firm has a decision to do is whether it shuts down or not. Does it reduce its variable cost to zero and its production to zero? In the long run, the firm can also decide to exit the market and get out of those fixed costs. So this is a story about not just shutting down the operation, but also breaking leases, getting out of them, or just waiting for the lease to expire. That's the long run story here. All right, so when does a firm exit? If you're thinking, well, gee, a firm probably exits if it's losing money, your intuition is correct. So let's see if we can spell this out a little bit more rigorously. All right, so what's our story? All right, so a firm exits in the long run if its total revenue from producing and selling so it produces and sells a good, right? If the firm exits if total revenue from producing and selling is less than total cost. So these total costs include the variable costs and the fixed costs. In other words, if a firm's not profitable, it's going to exit. Okay, let's see if we can take this wordiness and maybe put it in some shorthand and then eventually translate that to a graph. So what's our story here? The story is that the firm will exit if its total revenue is less than its total costs, right? That means it's losing money, total revenue less than total costs. Well, th that's kind of may maybe a little jargony and abstract. Let's just scale this. Okay, so it will exit if average revenue, so total revenue divided by quantity is less than total costs divided by quantity. And I'm sure you're looking at that going, well, that's not really helpful at all. This is just as abstract and jargony, what? Okay, let's go one more step with it. So the firm will exit if, what's total revenue divided by quantity? That's just price, right? If its price is less, what's its total cost divided by quantity? That's just its average total cost. So you could think about it this way. When is a firm going to exit? When its price is less than the cost to produce that unit. If price is less than its average cost, the firm is going to exit. Now the flip side is also true. We should probably mention it even if we don't spend too much time on it. So what's the flip side? Well, firms enter markets as well. They don't all just leave. So the firm will enter if it thinks it can sell for more than it costs to produce, right? So if price is greater than average total cost, then a firm is going to enter the market. So how do we take this story and put it into a diagram? So let's set up a diagram. You might draw this kind of big. Don't, don't draw it too small because we're going to make a little bit of a mess of it. And on our vertical axis, we're going to put price and cost. So price and cost. This is just the dollar variables, right? And we're going to compare that to our quantity. So our horizontal axis, we'll just call that Q. Now in other videos, we've talked about average total cost, marginal cost, average variable cost, etc. We're about to drag just a little bit of that back up. 
So our average total cost, we said initially falls as output is uh, increasing, right? As production increases. Well, why? Because the cost of rent is spread across more units. But eventually, these increasing marginal costs start to pull up that average total cost. So the average total cost curve, we said, is U-shaped. Right? This is our average total cost. So this first part is a story about essentially scale, if you want to think about it that way. Right? As production increases, your average cost decreases to a point. And then it starts the rise again. Well, why does it start the rise? Well, because labor becomes more expensive, uh, people are fighting over equipment, etc., Maybe there's a line that check people out at the cash register, so the salesman is standing in line, etc. That, that's all explored in another video. The important part here is that average total cost is this U-shaped function. All right, so what's the other line that we're going to need in here? We're going to need to add our marginal cost. So our marginal cost crosses through average total cost at the bottom of average total cost, at the minimum average total cost. What is this? This is our marginal cost. All right, so why do these two cross at the minimum average total cost? Well, if the next unit you produce is more expensive than the average, then it's going to pull up the average, right? So that's why they cross there. Again, we discussed this in another video as well. So with this diagram, how do we know when the firm exits the market? Well, this minimum point of average total cost turns out to be really important, right? So this minimum average total cost. The firm's making a decision by looking at price versus average total cost. Right? They're just looking at price versus what does it cost them to produce these units. So if we go back over here, we said that the firm exits if price is less than average total cost. Okay, well, let's bring this idea over to our diagram and think about it. So we have two areas to think about. One, where price is greater than the average cost to produce the good. That's this top area, right? Price, measured on our vertical axis, is above average total cost. And over here, we've got price is less than average total cost. So if price is really low, does a firm want to produce? Nope. If the price is below the firm's cost to produce, are they going to produce? Nope. So when we have a low price, how many is the firm going to produce? It's going to produce zero, right? If its costs are above the price, it's not going to be in the market. It's going to have exited the market. So essentially, the firm's supply curve is like this vertical line at zero, up until you hit this minimum of the average total cost. Okay, well, what happens when it hits average, this minimum of the average total cost. I say, well, if we produce at least enough to get us to this minimum point, then we can sell them for a price that's greater than average total cost. So once we hit that point, now the firm's saying, okay, if the price is greater than our average total cost, now we might be willing to play. So where does the firm produce in this diagram then? So we want to remember, right, so recall that supply, the supply curve, right, so the supply curve reflects costs. Which cost is it reflecting? Well, why is this thing upward sloping? The supply curve is upward sloping because it's reflecting marginal costs. So specifically, these are marginal costs that are being reflected. So you've got this 
firm supply curve. It's essentially a vertical line at zero till you hit the average total cost, the minimum of the average total cost. And then from there, the firm supply curve parallels and produces on the marginal cost curve. This area, that's the firm's supply curve. And why is it there? Because the price is greater than average total cost. So this marginal cost curve then becomes the firm's supply curve. How many are they willing to sell at each price? Find out by just taking price, tracing over till you run into this marginal cost curve, and you can find the quantity that the firm's willing to supply. I know there's a lot to this. The diagram is confusing for sure. First time you look at it, this can be really tough to wrap your mind around. For the firm's long run decision to exit, make sure that you understand the intuition of when is the firm going to get out when their price is less than their cost, their average total cost. What do they produce when price is less than the average total cost? They produce zero. They're going to produce none, which means they've exited the market. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.